Hey everyone, Brian Matias here. Now, sometimes when you get a new camera, you'll see there are a lot of menu options and not all of them make sense. There are a number though that are really important. So what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes and show you with my Sony a7R Mark II some of my most important settings. Now, the settings are pretty much universal across uh, the Sony a7 cameras. So if you have an a7, an a7 II, an a7S, um, you should be able to find, for the most part, the settings. The settings that I'm actually gonna go over in this video are not specific to a particular camera for the most part. So let's take a look at some of the settings. I'm gonna connect the camera to my computer and we'll actually take a look at the settings as if you were looking at the camera. So let's check it out. All right, so here we are on the output menu of the Sony a7R Mark II. Again, for the most part, the stuff that I'm gonna cover in this video is applicable to the a7, the a7R, a7S, and the Mark II versions of them. The, this first setting is probably the most important for me. And the reason for that is it's 2016, and oftentimes I'll take a photo and I'm out in the field just so that I can share it with my followers on social media. By default, when you turn on a new camera, usually under the quality setting, and this is again, we're on the, the photo tab on the first page, you'll see this quality setting. Usually by default, it's set to extra fine or fine. And these are JPEG uh, standards. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I shoot raw, and that's great. So you're probably gonna go up right away, one of the first things to do, and select raw. This is great. Now you're shooting in raw, which is uh, the uncompressed, untouched uh, file format as created by the manufacturer, in this case with Sony. Here's the thing. If I were to take a photo right now with the raw setting and send it to my smartphone, the JPEG that I'd get would be about a two megapixel JPEG because uh, the camera is not writing a full resolution JPEG. It's writing a JPEG that is essentially a small preview. It's essentially the JPEG you would see when you hit the play button or the preview button to see the photo. If you want to get a full resolution JPEG, you have one of two options. You can either shoot in one of the fine, extra fine standard formats, or if you want to have the best of both worlds, you can do what I do and shoot in raw plush JPEG. And what that will do is it will tell the camera when you expose any photo, write the raw file, and then immediately after, create a full resolution JPEG. Now let's take a look. I'm gonna switch over to my iPhone. So you can see I took two photos back to back. The first one was just with the raw setting. And then the second one was raw plus JPEG. It's just so that we can see the difference in resolution. Okay, let's take a look at a difference of when we send a photo from our Sony a7R Mark II to our smartphone. I'm gonna use this app called Exif Photos. It's free, and in this case, obviously, I'm on an iPhone. Here's the first photo. You can see this was taken with the camera set just to RAW. If you look on the top left, the resolution is 1616 by 1080. So just about a two megapixel JPEG. This is fine. I mean, it's a relatively small uh, image. You can see it's about 286 kilobytes, but uh, if you are planning on doing any extensive editing on your smartphone, you might run into problems, especially if you want to crop in a bit because of how little resolution there is. Now, here's the same photo. Basically, all I did was I changed the settings from RAW to RAW plus JPEG. Now you can see, look at the resolution. 7952 by 5304, and it jumped from just a, a few hundred kilobytes to almost six and a half megabytes. With this, this is a full resolution JPEG. This gives you a lot more latitude in terms of cropping in and editing. And for me, if I'm gonna edit a photo on the go for my A7R Mark II, I wanna have as much advantage as I can. Okay, let's jump back to the camera and take a look at a few more settings. Now we're still on the camera tab, but we've moved over to page six. And there are two settings here that when you get a new Sony camera are on by default. The first is long exposure noise reduction, and the second is high ISO noise reduction. Now, of the two, the long exposure noise reduction is, for me is very important to turn off. The reason for this is inherently it's a great option. If you're taking a long exposure at a very high ISO, um, the camera can actually go ahead and apply a little bit of noise reduction. That will help reduce some of the noise the graininess, those little bits that you see that make the uh, video or image look a bit crispy. The problem with long exposure noise reduction is, let's say you put the camera into bulb mode, 
uh, if this setting is on and you set the exposure for a minute, the camera will take about another minute of processing. So that's a minute that you're waiting for the camera to finish up applying the noise reduction. That to me is precious shooting time that is being used, plus you're draining your camera battery. So I set this to off. The same thing for high ISO noise reduction. My rationale is I wanna get the shooting when I'm in the field with my camera, I'll take care of noise reduction with post-processing software when I'm at my computer, either at home or on the road. All right, now we're moving on to the gear tab on the first page. And the first setting that I wanna look at is MF Assist, which stands for Manual Focus Assist. Right now I have it for off, and I wanna to illustrate to you what that means. So here, right now the camera's set to autofocus. You can see the autofocus brackets for phase detection. Uh, and the camera is focusing on the lens. In this case, it's the Sony 90 millimeter macro lens. I'm gonna to switch to manual focus. And again, we have MF assist off. So what happens when I turn the focus ring, you can see uh, we have our distance scale and the image goes in and out of focus. The problem here is that it can be hard, depending on your vision, to see the details. That's where manual focus assist comes in. So if we go in here, and select it to turn on. Now, when we go to our image, as soon as you start turning, you can see how we zoom in. And what's cool is you can use the D-pad to kind of move around the image. And this gives you assurance that whatever you're focusing on, even if it's something small like text, is in focus. And this is brilliant for me. This also segues into another setting right below it that's really important. For me, the focus magnification time, by default, if I remember correctly, is set to two seconds. What that means is when you start turning the focus ring, assuming you have manual focus assist on, after two seconds of not touching the lens, uh, the, the assist zoom turns off. Now, sometimes it takes a bit longer for me, you know, either I'm looking around and I don't wanna have to keep zooming in and out. So I set my focus magnification time to no limit. What that basically means is, like we just did, if I zoom in, I can leave the screen on and it'll stay zoomed in for an unlimited amount of time, basically until I half press the shutter or I hit the focus zoom key twice. Now we're still on the gear tab, but we're moving on to page seven and we're gonna talk about custom key settings. This is a very personal thing. Obviously what works for you may be different than me, but I'd like to show you my rationale of how I use my custom keys. We're gonna go into it, and the first thing that I do is turn off the control wheel. Basically, if I remember correctly, the default setting is ISO. I don't want any controls being affected by the control wheel because the control wheel can get moved around during shooting, and I don't wanna inadvertently change one of the settings. So this is set to not set, which is fine. Custom button one gets focus magnifier. So on the A7R Mark II, if we're viewing something, if I hit C1, that brings up the reticle here for focus magnification. And we just talked about that with the settings. Because it's on, I have it. If you look at the very top left of the display, it's at one time magnification, meaning it's this is the regular magnification. If I hit C1 again, it goes into five times. And then if I hit it a second time, it goes into 12 and a half, half time zoom. So this is beautiful for really ensuring sharp focus. And then if you hit it one more time, it returns back to regular view. Jumping back into the custom key settings, custom button two is set to peaking level. Peaking level essentially controls the strength of focus peaking which is brilliant because effectively whatever is in focus or in your plane of focus will be outlined in a color of your choice, whether it's red or green or white. And if I hit C2, by default I have peaking turned off because I don't usually use it. However, if I want to, with a simple touch of the C2 button, I can select peak low, medium, or high, which controls the sensitivity of the peaking. Custom button three is set to send a smartphone. One of the most used functions for me. If I'm at my computer and I hit C3, I can go through the process of selecting photos on my phone or on the camera itself. I can send one photo or multiple photos or all photos. Uh, it is 
one of easily my most used functions. I have custom button four set to steady shot. Effectively, this controls the image stabilization, whether it's on or off. When I'm hand holding, I have this set to on and that will activate image stabilization or steady shot when I'm holding the camera. However, if I'm on a tripod or if my camera's on a tripod, I'll set it to off because I don't need the camera trying to adjust for any sort of vibrations because there in theory aren't any because it's sitting on a solid tripod. The final option on this page of the custom key settings is the center button. And this I have set to the ISO control, not the control wheel. So if I'm shooting and I hit the center button, I have control over my ISO. It's there, it's super easy to get. And when I'm done, I just hit the center button again. The second page of custom key settings opens up even more options. This time we're controlling the left and right and down buttons on the, the D-pad or the circular D-pad. And then you also have uh, control buttons for auto exposure lock and autofocus manual focus. That's the little toggle switch towards the top uh, right below the C3 button. So from the top, the left button I have set to drive mode. So if we're in our view mode here and I hit left, this gives me uh, probably one of the more used functions. This is single shooting, high speed shooting. If I wanna do a two second delay or a 10 second delay, I can do that, uh, as well as bracketing options. So this uh, is where I'll jump into really quickly to change my drive mode. The right button allows me to change the focus area setting. So when we're shooting, if I hit the right button, I can choose between the wide, zone, center, and then also flexible spot. Now, this is cool because if I select flexible spot, I can choose where I want the camera to focus, you know, with a really kind of refined setting. And this allows me to jump into the next custom setting, which is the down button. And that I have set to focus settings. Now, normally, if we're back here and I wanna change that spot that I just positioned, I'd have to hit the right button, I'd have to hit the center button, and then I can move around. That's just an extra click that I don't want. With focus settings set to the down button, I just hit down and I can start moving around. Nothing else needs to be done. So it's just a really quick way for me to change that focus point. If I'm shooting a portrait, I'll set the camera to AEL and what that allows me to do is by having the button set to eye autofocus, when I press that button, the camera will automatically engage the eye autofocus, which on the A7R Mark II and A7S Mark II is one of the coolest features. Then with AF-MF button, if I have that set when I'm shooting, all that does is it toggles between autofocus, which is on right now, and manual focus. So as I press it, if I need to jump really quickly between the two modes, it's just a press of a button. Okay, now we're on page eight of the gear list and this is one of those settings that I'm super thankful for. The movie button is this little button that's recessed on the side, the right side of the camera. And by default, it's set to always. And what that means is if you hit that button, no matter what mode you're in, the camera will start recording a video. For me, I have the camera slung on my side sometimes. Sometimes it's in my camera bag and it might be powered on and I don't want it to trigger uh, accidentally. So with movie mode only, that tells the camera that unless the camera is set to movie mode uh, on the mode dial on the top, that movie button is disengaged. It's something simple, but it actually has saved my butt a few times and I'm really appreciative for it. The final menu item that I wanna look at is on the gear tab back on page two, and that's just because I forgot about it, but it's really important, and it's called auto review. Now I have it set to off but you have options of two, five, and 10 seconds. And what this does is it allows you to get a preview of what you just shot on screen for two, five, or 10 seconds. But that's a problem to me. Watch, let's set the menu setting to two seconds and then jump back to shooting. I'm gonna get my focus and then I'm gonna shoot. And because it's set to two seconds, your display is now being monopolized by that preview. And then after two seconds or five seconds or 10 seconds, it'll come back to shooting mode. I don't want anything stopping me uh, when I'm in kind of a groove of shooting, which is why I have it set to off. So if you turn it off and you jump back to shooting, you can keep shooting and there's no delay. 
you just, it just goes from shot to shot. To me, that's very important. When I'm done with my sequence of shots, then I can go to the preview button and review the photos. That's the right time for me uh, to review a photo, not when I'm actually photographing. So there you go. Those are some of the most important camera settings that I change on my Sony cameras. And I really hope it helps you with your photography. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Thanks a lot.